Today on Unity Motorsports Garage, I'm going to show you the technique that we use to flow test cylinder heads. It's more than airflow. Stay tuned. I know, I know, I know. There are tons of videos out there on flow testing. I get it. But this is to show the procedure that we use and like I said in the very beginning, is more than about airflow. There are so many other factors that come into play when flow testing cylinder heads. And if you only use CFM as your guide, you're using just a fraction of what the flow bench can actually tell you. So the video that I'm getting ready to show you is one of my earlier videos. So I apologize. I mean, yeah, I was rude and crude. It was recorded back, I think, in May of 2020. And I was flow testing a Trick Flow Twisted Wedge 170 head, a very, very early casting that my good buddy, uh, Eric Hester of m and &E Engine Services, had ported one of the intake and one exhaust port. And he wanted to know how his porting was going. So I told him, I said, bring it to me, we'll run it through the paces, put it on the bench, the IOP program, and that's what you're getting ready to see, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, the first thing we do when we start flow testing cylinder heads is actually CC the intake port and exhaust port. Why do we do that? Because it's gonna give us an indication of the port energy that's developed in this, so, and, you know, you can have good CFM numbers, but we're also after port velocity. So those two things are key factors when it comes to making power. But if you want to find out more, check out that IOP program. But right now I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to get this thing on the flow bench. You know that the first step of this procedure is getting the volume of the port. So next thing I'm going to do is measure the face of the ports at the opening so that we can put those calculations into the program as well for both the intake and exhaust. Once I finish that, I will measure the actual length of the runner and I will show you how I do that as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna measure the port face at the opening. Okay, that is 2165 right there the uh, height and the width is 1.38 so we will put those measurements into the program and go from there so next we're going to determine how long this port is Okay, so you might be asking yourself, how do we measure the actual length of the runner itself? Well, DV showed me this trick quite some time back. You find a simple piece of wire or solder or anything that you can mold and shape very easily, such as this right here. You can go to any hobby, uh, hobby store and get what's called hobby wire. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the first step is bring the wire to the bottom to the edge of the port face okay and then you're going to mold it to the floor of the port itself out to where the seat is at okay once you have that straighten the wire out Okay, then we're going to measure and see what we came up with on that. Okay, in this instance, we're looking at around 3,700 for the bottom floor, okay? So now we're gonna do the same thing except for what we're going to do the top of the roof of the port. So once again, take your wire, come right here, 
to the edge of the port face, okay? And then you're going to push the wire and make sure that it's perfectly flat throughout. Push it down into the bowl. And once again, work it out to the actual valve seat itself. Once you have that, straighten the wire out again. Take your calipers and then measure the length of that as well. Okay, and it looks like we're around 5.640. So what you do is you take the two measurements that we have taken here, add them together and divide by two, and that'll give you the port length. One of the things that you gotta do when you're flowing cylinder heads is pay attention to the fixture that you're using to bolt the head on. A lot of times companies will quote high CFM numbers and that could be due to using a bore that's bigger. So what happens is that it makes the cylinder head unshrouded, thus flowing more air. So if you're using, in our, like in our case, a 4030 bore, you need to use a 4030 fixture. That way that you know you're getting the right numbers. Now we have it mocked up on the flow bench itself. And the first thing you've got to do is make a manifold to smooth out the air entry going into the port itself because you don't want to catch a sharp edge like that. Second thing is setting up a, a device to where you can manually open the valve and get your readings. So what we've done is we've done turn the bench on and checked our system for leaks because we're using a gasket here to seal this and we've got a spark plug and a spark plug hole so what you have to do is take that leakage if you have any the ideal is to have zero but we can compensate for that in the flow calm meter here so you go in and you put all of those perimeters in and then you're ready to begin your test once you have it zeroed out and it's showing zero when the flow bench is on, we're ready to start. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn this thing on and we're going to go through the process. Alright, see right here? I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is CFM just barely bouncing around so as I open this valve our CFM rating will come right here and for this particular test we're using 28 inches of mercury that's important as well because when your flow bench is calibrated to a certain uh, inch number that correlates to the actual flow so this bench you see it's right at the 28 7 mark, so good to go there. doing when you see me changing the dial is I'm changing the scale so that we're still operating in the motor of the flow bench's capacity because that's what we're pulling against is that motor inside of here.
Okay, so I just finished up flowing this stock port here. First of all, I apologize for the noise in the background. DV's over in the porting room doing some work on some 289 heads still. Um, but this is what we got. This here's the actual flow numbers from this stock port. I'm gonna switch everything over and do the exhaust side just like we did on this particular set right here and uh, once we get the numbers we'll put all of this into the program that I was telling you about well we just finished up the flow testing on our trick flow head and before we get over to the computer program portion of the deal I want to give you the caveat of our exhaust flow testing see here in DB shop we do all of our testing without a pipe attached to the head why do we do that couple reasons. First, DB's 50 years plus experience, he's been doing it without a pipe. So that's just his thing and it gives him a good way to compare cylinder head to cylinder head. Two, when you put a piece of pipe on there, it's not always going to be the same radius or shape and so your results could come up different. So instead of putting a piece of pipe on there that could artificially change the number so to speak, we decided that it's best just to do it without the pipe and go with that and it gives you an accurate representation between uh, looking at cylinder head to cylinder head. Okay, so the age old question becomes, now that we have our flow numbers, what do you do with them? You know, what's the approach you should take in determining whether you're going in the right direction or not? Okay, and that's where this program really shows its worth. Just looking at the raw numbers here, you can see that pretty much up until the upper lifts, the stock head delivers, uh, I mean the stock runner delivers better flow. Now, it's got to be pointed out that once you reach about 300 thousandths lift, the port itself starts to determine your flow numbers. Below that point, is a product of the valve seat itself okay and having the valve seat perfect makes all the difference in how the combination works because you know we've seen some huge differences down low and then this once again getting into controversial subjects a lot of people say you don't want a lot of low lift flow but we go against the grain when it comes to that because think of it this way as soon as that valve is opening, it comes off the seat, say, 10 thousandths. Our job is to stuff as much air as you possibly can in that cylinder, okay? And the sooner you can get the column of air moving into the cylinder, the better off you are. So we try to maximize low lift flow because that can mean the difference in winning and losing. But like I said, that's a controversial subject and other people have different thoughts but this is what we use you know if you want to compare a chart of the cfm between the two you know you can easily do that and see the gains that you're getting between the flow numbers of the standard port and the modified ports okay you can see the cfm per square inch and chart that out same way with the coefficient of discharge all right mean port velocity this here will tell you how fast the air is moving through the port which is very important and then port energy
Well, I hope you got something from that. I did not go in detail about the IOP program that DV and I use that he came up with, uh, mainly because he'll probably do a video going more in detail about that on his channel. So this was just a brief glimpse as to how we go about flowing cylinder heads. And it's not just about CFM. You know, it's about port velocity, uh, port energy density, uh, discharge coefficients, many different things. And those things can tell you if you're going the right direction or the wrong direction in your porting. Now, I'm not an expert. I have a full-time job. I do this stuff as a hobby and for fun. But working with DV, I've learned so much over the years and got to do some really cool heads over the years. Uh, so I hope you got something from it. And until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.